Melang Sase Konala, a tutor or secondary school in Soweto, continuing the Kelezanati tradition, ask the right questions, get the right answers. I've got a lady next to me who's going to ask our first learner question of the day. Sabonis Kunjani. Yebonya Pila Unjani. I'm good, man. What's your name? Where are you from? Intabi Senkunene from Zone 1 in Maryland. Gunene. Yes. Um, um, then, again, do you guys originally like you, you, were, you were born and raised in Soweto? Yes, me and I was. Okay, and your mom and dad? They're from here. Yeah. Ah, who's from elsewhere? I don't know, maybe our, folk, our grandfathers or whatever, I don't know. Oh, so when you say, when you're going home, do you go to KZN or to Eastern Cape or...? Actually, I go to Mafeking. Oh. My dad's side. Oh, Maftan in the building. All right, what is your learning question for our teacher in the studio? How do I go about calculating frequency observed by a stationary listener when an ambulance with a siren on is traveling towards him? All right, how do I go about calculating the frequency observed by a stationary listener when an ambulance with its siren on is traveling towards that listener? Tricky question indeed, but we're sure our Gelezenati teacher can help us out. Over to you. Well, thank you for that question. Let's just put it up on our screen so that you can see it too. They're asking us, how do I calculate the frequency observed by a stationary listener when an ambulance with its siren on is traveling towards him? Okay, now like you know by now, we usually actually need to start at the beginning of the story. And our beginning starts with actually seeing what's the definition of the Doppler effect. Now, although they're not many at times actually ask you this definition, you should actually know it in order to be able to interpret some of these questions and actually fully understand them. So let's take a look at that definition. It says that it's the apparent change in frequency of a source of sound if there is relative motion between the source of the sound and the observer. So just to break it down a bit, it's the apparent change. That means you observe it as a different frequency if there is motion between the source and the person that's listening to this sound coming from the source. If there's no motion, then obviously it's going to be staying exactly the same. Okay, now let's quickly start off by taking a look at some of your normal common definitions which you actually have taken from grade 10, if I'm not mistaken. Let's take a look at that. It says, first off, the wave front. Wave front is an imaginary line joining all the points in a wave that are in phase in this situation. So now you've noticed we've taken a look here at our transverse wave as you've known it from grade 10. And the, we've typically viewed it here from the side. But what we are going to be doing now is we're going to view it from above. And that's usually what we see when we put a little let's say a piece of rock and throw it into a pond or you've got a droplet that's been dropping into a bucket of water or even a bathtub and then you'll see these little ripples so when you view it from above you actually just see the crests you do not see the troughs and the rest of the shape of the graph so that means basically we're viewing it from above and these are then seen as just straight lines so that means between two crests we will talk about the wavelength now just shortly that's when we actually will be seeing a wavelength Okay, now let's quickly go over to our wavelength and see what again, what was the symbol and the unit that we ended up using. So the wavelength, that's the distance between two consecutive or successive wave fronts, and in our case means, for example, between two consecutive crests. Also, you'll notice that it's actually just as long as there's one complete wave motion between those two points that are in phase, that's where we're going to be having the wavelength. And as you've noticed, that's always measured in meters. The next one is frequency. Now you'll notice that our symbol for frequency is a small to F, where is that for wavelength was that lambda Greek sign and frequency's case it's the number of waves per second. Now I've tried to show you here let's say from here to here is one second you'll notice here's many waves per second compared to the bottom part for the same second I've got less waves. So obviously if there is going to be in this case more waves it means a higher frequency less waves obviously a lower frequency and we always measure it in Hertz. Now you've also learned in grade 10 that Hertz could also be seen as per second that means one divided by second as its unit but in most cases we end up using hertz good let's take a look at some of these definitions now the frequency refers for us to the pitch of the sound so that means how high the note or how low the note is so that means if i've got more waves per second i've got a higher pitch if i've got less waves per second i've got a lower pitch but now do not confuse this with the sound's loudness or softness that's got to do with the amplitude now let's take a look at this specific diagram that i've drawn us for us here remember that amplitude is the distance maximum displacement rather from the rest position to the top or to the bottom now if this maximum displacement or amplitude is very high then it means a loud sound if it is fairly low then it means for me a softer sound so you'll notice i've got the same number of waves it's just case i've just got a 
higher amplitude and over here a lower amplitude. Okay, so now that we've sorted that thing out, it means then for us, pitch has got to do with frequency and that's what we will be observing during our Doppler effect, whereas amplitude has actually got to do with the loudness or the softness of the sound. And we won't actually be referring to that in our Doppler effect. Okay, so it says here a higher frequency refers to a higher pitch, which means a higher note, lower frequency as you now know, lower pitch and thus a lower note. Now we are going to be taking a look at our old faithful little formula here where its speed is equal to frequency times lambda. Now this is going to be the speed of sound in a specific medium and we're going to measure it in meters per second. Now if you can remember that if the medium stays the same, the speed of the sound will remain constant and then the frequency will be inversely proportional to the wavelength. So let's just quickly stand still at that first part. The moment that I change the medium in which the sound is traveling, then the speed of the sound will change. So for example, if it's talking in air, then obviously it's going to have that sound a specific speed, which is typically around about 340 meters per second. Should I be speaking underwater, then that speed of the sound will be, in this case, a higher velocity of around about 1,500 meters per second because the medium in which I'm speaking changed. So as long as the medium stays the same, that speed of the sound will be that same value. Okay, now as we've said, if that speed is then constant, then it means our frequency is inversely proportional to the wavelength, which means if the frequency increases, the wavelength will decrease and vice versa. Good. Let's quickly go on and take a look at how we will be able to draw different wave fronts to be able to establish whether the frequency is higher or lower. So let's take a look as you've got here on your screen. For a stationary object, the sound waves will emit in all directions with the same wavelength and thus the same frequency. So here I've got a little ambulance, it's got a siren on, and you'll notice now that these wave fronts, which is your ripples basically as you've seen them in water, actually has got the same wavelength in the front and at the back. And because there's no difference in the front and at the back, it means for us this object must be stationary. But now the moment that this object is got is assigned to move forward, it's going to move into these wave fronts in the front. And that basically means it's going to compress them, making them smaller. But as it moves into them in the front, it means those at the back is going to get stretched out. So let's take a look at a picture to be able to explain this. So the first part here, you'll notice it's moving into the wave fronts over here, making the wavelength shorter. And that means for us, if it's a shorter wavelength, the opposite happens to the frequency. That means for us a higher frequency. So if you're standing in the front, you will thus hear a higher frequency, which means for me a higher pitch. On the other hand, if you're standing at the back, obviously you'll notice now this wavelength is a lot longer compared to when those ones in the front. And therefore it means for you a lower frequency and you'll end up hearing a lower pitch. Okay. Now one other very important thing that we always so need to take into consideration is you hear typically the sound as coming louder and then going softer. But it's actually not the case if you're standing right in front of the object when it moves towards you. So that means if an ambulance is standing right in front of you moving towards you, then you'll hear the same high frequency whether it's 200 meters away or 20 meters away or 2 meters away. The only time that you really hear it as a louder sound and then as a softer sound is when you stand at an angle to what the object is moving. Okay, but in all our examples, we'll be assuming you're standing right in the front or otherwise right at the back as it's leaving you. Hoots, now let's take a look in this situation at a specific formula that we will be using and be getting on our formula sheet to do our Doppler effect calculations. Now this formula is given to you as I've already said. You've got to have VL is equal to V plus or minus VL in this case the bottom V plus or minus Vs and then you've got Fs next to it. Now our FL stands for frequency of the listener, Fs stands for frequency of the source and this first V stands the velocity of the sound in air or whatever the medium might be. Now they can either give you the value in the question which in most cases happen but otherwise they'll give you enough information to go and calculate the specific value. Now something else as well is the velocity of the listener which is your VL and then the velocity of the source. Good. Now there's a few steps that we're going to need to go through every time you get a Doppler effect question. Now this section is actually very, very easy and you can and should get full marks for this section because you can make up your marks should you have made a mistake in some of your previous sections work. So first off, the thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to need to draw a picture for yourself. Roughly, doesn't matter, that thing doesn't get marked. And then on that picture, you're going to need to go and indicate the direction. Now the direction is always from the listener 
to the source as positive. So for example, here's my ambulance, here's the listener, from my listener to the source is positive. So if this ambulance is moving towards my listener, it will be a negative velocity at which it's moving. Also, you first copy the formula as is from the formula sheet without any changes, and only then do you go and manipulate the formula to see do you need to have a plus or a minus instead of just putting plus minus as they said in the formula. Still at two secondary, I've got our second. Learning question four, I'm trying to. What's this like? Tell me, I'm so bonus. Yeah, pillow, you know. I'm not crying. Dubai, come along. Pindile. Wagaba. Waga Shiloban. Shiloban. Pindile Shiloban. Yeah, boy. What, 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 what language or culture is that surname? Swati. Swati. Yes. Ah, na bigne, na we na. Um, abang and mama, aba pumen na sporti ba tu kuti Swati ni asfunda vele. Sen kona na uskulu. Ah, Swati sakon. Yo, nyaloge le spanga le soswa ilela. Um, when, what, what, what do you think is the importance of culture in young people in South Africa? Well, um, it's... Wait, it's, show them, show them. Oh, right, See. all right. But it's just... Yeah, yeah, it's getting, you must get a new one. Yeah, as you know. It's a good Well, um, I think it's important for us as youngins to know the culture because, I mean, it's who we are. It's what's left of us. So yeah. we need to carry it on to our, you know, offsprings and stuff like that. So I think it's important so that we might not lose the sense of who we are. So, yeah. Definitely, I believe in that. I Alright, so what is your learner question for our teacher? Uh, my learner question is, how do you draw a graph representing a change in frequency versus the time for an observer standing in front of and behind an ambulance with its sign on? Alright, how do you draw a graph representing the change in frequency and the time for an observer standing in front of and behind an ambulance with its siren on. Over to you in the studio. Well, thank you so much for that question. Let's just put it up on our screen so that you can also see what she was asking us. She asked, how do I draw a graph that represents the change in the frequency versus time for an observer standing in the front and then at the back of an ambulance with its siren on? Now, in order for me to be able to show you how you will end up drawing a graph like that, we're going to need to be using values. So that means we're going to need to make use of an example with values in order to go and draw that graph. So first off, let's take a look at that in example. It says an ambulance travels at a constant speed of 15 meters per second with its siren on at a frequency of 500 hertz. A girl standing in the middle of the road hears a change in the pitch as the ambulance approaches her and then obviously as it passes and moves away from her. First off, go and calculate the frequency of the sound that the girl hears as the ambulance approaches her, taking the speed of sound in air to be 340 meters per second. So as we said previously, first step, you need to go and draw a picture for yourself. And then secondly, determine the direction. So let's start off there. Here's a little picture for myself. There's the ambulance. This is the goal. It's approaching the goal. But remember that the, from the listener to the source is always positive, which means that this ambulance is actually going to be traveling at a negative velocity. Now, secondly, we're going to take a look at our specific formula. And we notice we need to copy and paste this formula from the formula sheet as is. Only then are we allowed to go and change it. So noting at the first part, here this v stands for the speed of sound in air which is 340 my velocity of the listener is zero because the listener is not moving so we're going to leave it out we're not going to put in plus or minus zero then at the bottom of it we still have the speed of sound in air which is 340 but now we know that the ambulance is moving at 15 but we've just seen after drawing in our direction in our picture it will be negative 15 and then we multiply by the frequency of the source from there onwards if we simplified we get to a frequency of 500 23,08 hertz for our listener. So that is now when it is actually approaching her. Now let's go and do the second part of the calculation when it's then moving away from her. So we basically will have the same situation apart from the picture that looks different. So we notice now the ambulance is moving away from the listener to the source is positive, but in this case the ambulance now will also be moving at a positive velocity. So everything is pretty much the same apart from this little part. We don't have negative anymore, we're going to be having a positive 15 and we end up being getting 478,87 hertz. So now I've got these two values. Remember that we said it doesn't matter how far in the front she is of this ambulance when it's approaching her, she'll hear it at exactly the same frequency. And it doesn't matter how far at the back she is either, she's going to hear it at that same 478,83 hertz. So now let's go and put that into a graph of velocity or rather frequency versus time. So on my y-axis, we're going to have the frequency, the 
4,08 hertz and the 478,87 hertz. Notice though that it's continuous lines because we said it doesn't matter how far in the front he or she is and the same here at the back, it doesn't matter how far at the back he or she is, they're gonna hear it at the same pitch. So we're gonna have a quick change from a high to a low frequency as it passes them. Okay, now let's quickly take a look at the next part of the question and they love bringing in this type of question. It says, how will the frequency observed by the ambulance driver compare to that of the sound waves emitted by the siren? Explain your answer. So now we're talking about the driver inside the ambulance. Now remember again what that definition of our Doppler effect said, there must be an apparent change in frequency. So if there's no motion between the listener and the observer, then it means that there is not going to be any change in frequency. So our ambulance driver is going to hear it at 500 hertz because there's no motion between him who's the listener and in this case the source which is the ambulance. 